When confronted with blatant NASA lies and obvious globe inconsistencies, the number one most common frequently asked question is undoubtedly, but why would anyone lie about the shape of the Earth? For what purpose would there be a multi-generational, worldwide conspiracy to cover up the truth of our home? Why would NASA spend billions of dollars building rockets just to prank the population about outer space? What on earth would be the point of hiding the flat earth? To begin with, almost anyone being asked this question is not directly involved in creating or maintaining the lie, so insisting a definitive answer of motive from completely uninvolved parties is impossible. When someone tells a lie, their motives for doing so and their true inner purposes are known to them alone. People being lied to can attempt to deduce and guess at the reasons for a liar's actions, but ultimately, that information can only be revealed by the liars themselves. We flat earthers are not the malefactors in this situation, so we simply cannot adequately answer such a question without being inside the minds of the culprits. It should be obvious that asking uninvolved parties about the inner motives of other people is a fruitless and impossible endeavor. So why then is this universally the number one most common frequently asked question right after someone identifies a flat earther? The query is almost always accompanied by a smirk, a sneer, an eye roll, or outright laughter, and this gives away the underlying intention of asking. The majority of people asking this question have not actually done any research into the subject, and know full well that uninvolved parties cannot provide another's motive. Therefore, this knee-jerk phrase, but why would they lie, so commonly repeated, is much more so a snarky defense mechanism than a genuine question. Incessantly asking why the world's governments would lie, without first doing your due diligence in researching the endless evidence and experiments proving that they most certainly are lying, is like coming upon a bloody homicidal crime scene with your eyes closed and refusing to believe it happened because you cannot fathom the perpetrator's motive, and until someone offers up a reason suitable to your subjective sensibilities, only then might you open your eyes and investigate the obvious murder. Flat earthers are like senior detectives on the crime scene, collecting evidence, taking photographs, and cataloging proofs, while ignorant globe defenders act like smug rookies, rocking up late and claiming we are looking in the wrong place. So flat earthers cannot be expected to give definitive, conclusive answers to this inappropriately directed question, but we can attempt to deduce and guess what the reason or reasons may be. As for the specific question of why would NASA and other government space agencies spend billions of dollars on this deception, it should be noted that these organizations are funded by money taken from the pockets of taxpayers in their respective countries. In other words, these government space agencies are annually freely receiving billions of dollars that their populations are forced to pay them. NASA alone received $24 billion of American taxpayer money in 2022, which amounts to over $65 million every single day. That makes NASA and other government space agencies among the biggest black-budget black holes in existence, sucking in trillions of dollars over the decades just to give us a bunch of rockets launched into the ocean and CGI cartoons on television. Maintaining the illusion is comparatively cheap, so rather than being some unrealistically expensive enterprise, it is actually an incredibly lucrative and profitable scam. Beyond simply being a productive moneymaker, however, the entire concept of outer space, along with the globe Earth and the so-called Big Bang, has created and promoted a nihilistic, materialist worldview where any idea of God or intelligent design is removed and replaced with random, haphazard coincidence. Instead of humans being purposefully created by a purposeful creator, instead of Earth being intelligently designed by an intelligent designer, we are told that life, nature, and everything else was all brought into existence for nothing and by accident. We are told that before time, space, matter, consciousness, intelligence, and life, that there was absolutely nothing. Then, in an instant, 
and for no reason at all, the nothingness exploded. And instead of destroying things like every other explosion, this explosion created things. It created everything. The nothingness explosion somehow created space, time, and all matter in the universe by ejaculating this creationary explosive primordial soup and the debris shooting outwards at 670 million miles per hour for over 14 billion years finally culminated to create you. First, some of the more gaseous nothing came together forming suns and stars. Then solid pieces of the nothing came together forming planets and moons. Then the nothing turned hydrogen and oxygen came together forming water on the nothing planet Earth out of which single-celled living organisms magically appeared, got to work dividing and multiplying into multi-celled conscious organisms, which multiplied and divided, mutated and morphed into various forms of sea life, which adapted and evolved and crawled onto land, replaced gills with lungs, lost tails, grew opposable thumbs, and started grasping at straws like this ridiculous nihilistic notion of Big Bang evolution. This anti-God, anti-spiritual, materialist theory of evolution is taught as gospel truth in schools worldwide and has been staunchly protected by the infallibility of science for over 150 years. But in actual fact, just as science has failed to find one true, valid proof that Earth is a ball spinning around the sun, scientists have failed to discover a single piece of evidence that the material world is truly a product of blind chance evolution. Children are still taught, however, that we came from nothing, for no reason, and that one day in the future the sun will burn up, killing us all, and destroying everything we built. This fatalistic, nihilistic, materialist creation and destruction story has fabricated a veritable atheistic religion that masquerades as scientific truth. By removing Earth from the stationary center of the universe, they have moved us physically and metaphysically from a place of supreme importance to one of complete indifference. If Earth is the center of all creation, then that denotes a special significance to our home and to us, the most intelligent of the intelligent designer's designs. But if Earth is just one of billions of planets revolving around billions of stars in billions of galaxies, then the ideas of God, creation, and a specific purpose for human existence become highly implausible. This atheistic, nihilistic, materialist paradigm spiritually crushes the believer while simultaneously bolstering and emboldening their egos, because if they have no higher purpose, everyone is just an accident, and everything will end when the sun burns up, the only thing that really matters in life is me, myself, and I. Through indoctrination into this anti-spiritual religion, believers lose faith in anything beyond the material world, and become material boys and girls, malleable, selfish, hedonistic consumers. This then becomes fertile ground for further deceptions, as people uprooted from their true beginnings and given false bearings can be led anywhere. Two places we are clearly not being led by this globe deception, however, are Antarctica and the North Pole. These two locations hold inherent significance in the Flat Earth model of the cosmos, because Antarctica is the elevated outer rim encompassing and extending around all the other continents, while the North Pole is the center point of the world where all compasses point and directly below Polaris, the only stationary star in the sky. But by turning our Earth plane into a planet tilted on its axis, this has effectively nullified any inherent special significance to Antarctica or the North Pole. On a globe, all locations hold equal importance, so the North Pole is no longer central, and Antarctica is just a small ice continent at the bottom of the ball. Interestingly enough, ancient world maps from before the globe deception took hold actually featured extra lands in both areas. The North Pole was home to a magnetic lodestone mountain called Mount Meru, surrounded by an encircling whirlpool, four distinct island continents, and separated by four rivers. 
These lands were even said to be inhabited by giants and pygmies in the notes of Gerardus Mercator's own map, as well as the testimonies of many ancient explorers, cartographers, and historians, including Pythias, Strabo, Pliny the Elder, St. Brandon, Adam of Bremen, Paul the Deacon, Gerald of Wales, Nicholas de Lynn, Jacobus Snowian, Anthony Jenkinson, Johannes Ruysch, and Olus Magnus, just to name a few. Since the globe deception took hold, however, these locations have completely disappeared from all modern maps. Likewise, in ancient maps, Antarctica was shown as having far more landmass than now, and many maps even featured additional continents beyond the Antarctic. Admiral Byrd claimed on live television that there were vast resources in untouched lands beyond Antarctica that had never been explored. And books like Worlds Beyond the Poles or The Iron Republic speak of entire civilizations existing south of the South Pole. By turning Earth into a ball, these potential extra lands, resources, and civilizations have been conceptually erased from the minds of the masses, as there is literally nowhere left for them to exist. The effect is similar to when intrepid young Truman from the Truman Show movie is told by his teacher that he is too late and everywhere has already been explored. In an instant, with that piece of false information, his adventurous spirit is crushed, and he is convinced that there is nowhere new to discover. In summation, this globe lie is essentially the biggest and most fundamental deception imaginable, uprooting people from the stable, level earth beneath their feet, shaping it into a ball, and throwing it around the sun. Humanity is left spinning out of control in a vast, blind, dumb universe that created everything for no reason by accident, and will eventually be blown away by a meteor strike or supernova. All of creation is explained by material processes, and anything remotely spiritual is just a quaint relic of a pre-scientific age. Everywhere on Earth has already been explored, and our only hope is pouring billions more dollars per year into NASA and other space agencies to take us to their other ball planets, like CGI Mars. Essentially, they have created a new world religion of scientism, complete with a creation and destruction story, prophets and prophecies, and removed any purpose or higher power, replacing it with a random, nonsensical explosion. So-called scientists became the new priests of the New World Religion, and the now malleable masses walk in lockstep towards whatever future they manufacture for us. <laughs>